John Brennan was recently nominated by President Obama to fill disgraced David Petraeus' position as CIA director. Many know little of Mr. Brennan, and the real question is, who is he, and what does his appointment mean for the future of the CIA, and how will it impact the average American? To put it simply, the CIA has long been the center of government corruption, overseeing illegal drone attacks, illegal wiretapping, and just general shady operations. As it turns out, John Brennan has been at the forefront of CIA corruption for at least the last 15 years. John Brennan's CIA career, which started in the late 1980s, has reached to the highest rungs of the CIA, and of course, to reach the positions that Mr. Brennan did, you don't just get there by your charm and wit. You get there by knowing the right people, I hate to use this term, but sucking the right dicks, and most of all, proving that you are a slave to the CIA and will do whatever they say. In 1999, after working as a spy in the Middle East for a number of years, Mr. Brennan was appointed the Chief of Staff to George Tennant, the then CIA Director. I like to refer to George Tennant as the father of the modern CIA reconnaissance drone. It was under his tenure that the first Predator drone was used in the field, or at least that was what is admitted publicly. In 2003, Mr. Brennan was made the director of the newly created Terrorist Threat Integration Center, a position he held until 2004. It was during his tenure there that the Orange Alert scandal happened, in which the Bush administration falsely raised the Homeland Security Advisory Alert System from yellow to orange, the second highest threat level just four days before Christmas. They did this because of supposed intel that Al-Qaeda planned an imminent attack that would quote, either rival or exceed the 9-11 attacks. It later turned out that the CIA fabricated the intel to bolster support for the Bush invasion of Iraq. It was Mr. Brennan's terrorist threat integration center that distributed the intelligence to the Bush White House, and it's almost certain that Brennan gave the go-ahead before it was sent. When asked about Brennan's involvement in the orange terror alert scandal, the Obama administration simply stated that it did not dispute that Brennan distributed the intelligence during the Bush era, but said that Brennan passed it along because it was his job. Yeah, the age-old excuse that he was just following orders. In 2006, Mr. Brennan left the CIA to become chairman of the admitted CIA front group, Intelligence and National Security Alliance, or INSA for short, and later became CEO of another CIA front group, the Analysis Corporation. It was during his time in the quote-unquote private industry that he made a complete 360 of his previous views on enhanced interrogation, making news as a vocal critic of waterboarding, which he told the New York Daily News, quote, it goes beyond the bounds of what civilized society should employ. In 2008, Brennan made the strategic decision of offending then-Senator Barack Obama during his presidential run. Contradicting himself later in April 2012, on an interview on ABC, he stated that he was neither a Republican nor a Democrat, or was nonpartisan. Politicize it in this way is the height of hypocrisy. Your response? I don't do politics. I don't do the campaign. I'm not a Democrat or Republican. I'm a counterterrorism advisor to the president. After Obama easily won the 2008 election, Brennan's name was floated around as director of the CIA, which created a huge uproar among liberal critics and human rights advocates who viewed Brennan as a Bush company man and wanted the change that Obama so promised them. Stephen Solds, the psychiatrist who organized a widely cited letter signed by about 200 of his professional colleagues opposing Brennan's nomination in 2008, stated just a few days before the making of this video, quote, in 2008 we are still hoping that Obama represented a radical change, end quote. I find it sad that these sheeple don't realize that Bush and Obama are just two flavors of the same thing all New World Order puppets, but I'll get to that later in another video. After the uproar that, left, that the left created, Brennan withdrew his name from consideration for the post, citing, quote, strong criticism by some quarters. Of course, Obama won't give up that easily, as you know, when he sets his mind on something, he usually gets it. Just look what happened with the fiscal cliff. Obama instead named Brennan to an influential post as his top counterterrorism advisor, which did not require a Senate confirmation. 
it was with Brennan's support that Obama tried to put 9-11 plotter Khalid Sheikh Mohammed on trial in New York City. It caused a huge uproar in many circles, not just because it would have cost taxpayers an estimated $250 million, but that the trial itself would have taken place just a few blocks away from the World Trade Center site. Mr. Brennan was also at the forefront of the warrantless wiretapping scandal was a staunch supporter of the immunity of the telecommunications companies who were just as much at fault as the government, allowing the government to illegally spy on their customers. In 2008, as the telecom immunity debate raged on, Brennan stated that I, quote, believe strongly that they should be granted that immunity because they were told to do so by the appropriate authorities and that they were operating on a legal context, and I also think that's important, end quote. This line of reasoning later implemented into law shields corporate communication companies from lawsuits from their customers who may have been unlawfully spied on. But perhaps the most disturbing and shocking aspect of John Brennan is his strong support and involvement in drone warfare. While George Tennant might have been the father of drone warfare, it is Mr. Brennan who was the mastermind behind the current operations. During Brennan's tenure as Obama's counterterrorism advisor, he devised a current flawed counterterrorism strategy, which relies too heavily on drone strikes that frequently kill civilians and provide Al Qaeda with countless new recruits. In an October 2012 article, the Washington Post further pointed to Brennan's strong involvement, stating that it is Brennan alone who took the drone strike recommendations to Obama for a final sign off. What has the strong, Brennan created White House policy on drone attacks meant for the people on the ground in countries like Yemen and Pakistan? In a single word, death. According to the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, which tracks U.S. drone attacks, over 300 people have died as a result of the Obama administration's drone program, with 18 more being killed just two days before the posting of this video. Who knows how many of those people were the actual quote-unquote bad guys. It is Brennan who is at the forefront of drone cover-ups and lies. In an April 2011 speech at the Woodrow Wilson Center, Brennan for the first time gave public acknowledgement of the Obama administration's drone strike program and began a long string of misleading lies on drone warfare to the American people, stating that innocent civilians had been killed but describing such cases as exceedingly rare. We tried to determine whether there was any collateral damage, including civilian deaths. There is, of course, no such thing as a perfect weapon and remotely piloted aircraft are no exception. As the President and others have acknowledged, there have indeed been instances when, despite the extraordinary precautions we take, civilians have been accidentally killed or worse, have been accidentally injured or worse, killed in these strikes. It is exceedingly rare, but it has happened. When it does, it pains us and re we regret it deeply as we do any time innocents are killed in war. He went even further, contradicting himself in two, June 2011, stating that there hasn't been a single collateral death because of exceptional proficiency and precision of the capabilities that the Americans have been able to develop. He further continued his string of lies in an August 2012 speech, having the audacity to claim that killing innocent civilians actually didn't create anti-American sentiment, did the opposite. Take a listen. Of course, attention has often focused on one counterterrorism tool in particular, targeted strikes, sometimes using remotely piloted aircraft, often referred to publicly as drones. In June, the Obama administration declassified the fact that in Yemen, our joint efforts have resulted in direct action against AQAP operatives and senior leaders. This spring, I addressed the subject of targeted strikes at length and why such strikes are legal, ethical, wise, and highly effective. Today, I'd simply say that all our CT efforts in Yemen are conducted in concert with the Yemeni government. When direct action is taken, every effort is made to avoid any civilian casualty. And contrary to conventional wisdom, we see little evidence that these actions are generating widespread anti-American sentiment or recruits for AQAP. In fact, we see the opposite. Our Yemeni partners are more eager to work with us. But of course, Brennan is dead wrong on this. And Gregory D. Johnson wrote in November 2012 for the New York Times that Brennan's assertion was either shockingly naive 
or deliberately misleading. So in the end, what does John Brennan's appointment mean? Well, to put it simply, more of the same, but a lot worse. Unfortunately, as the police state begins to show its true colors and emerge for more and more people to see, look in the years and months ahead for increasingly frequent drone attacks abroad and increasingly frequent use of drones as surveillance tools domestically. And as Gregory D. Johnson also said in his article, rather than promote the author of a failing strategy, we need a CIA director who will halt the agency's creeping militarization and restore to what it does best, collecting human intelligence. It is an intelligence agency after all, and not the Stasi.